to the channel. Um, hopefully you caught our last episode where we gave the full updated tour of the house and a long anticipated explanation of where we've been for the last two years. Um, so if you missed that, please check out our previous video. And for this week, or this couple of weeks, because we don't, we don't no, really... Mama, no, no, Mama, drink it, Yeah. Yeah, video. Yeah, video. video. Um, we don't really have time to commit to weekly episodes like we were doing before, but we are going to try to do a two-weekly episode, or like two a month. Um, so for this episode, um, I, we want to show you um, what we've been doing on the building upstairs and when we say upstairs we mean the next terrace up from where our main house is um it's of course not upstairs but it is to us <laughs> it's kind of up and at the back of the house over there um and yeah we said that we would show you what's going on there we talked i talked a little bit um uh, about it and i showed you the reciprocal roof and where we're at um, but I'm going to be sharing with you guys not like the whole instructional thing like we did before because you guys know now how to build an earthback house and if you don't you can check out our previous videos because we really I think we really covered almost everything in there um, but one thing we never really talked about was like the philosophy and the, the, the theory of off-grid living you know why you would choose to live like this why you would build an earthback house um, and so that's with this time around we want to share with you a little bit more like that um, the, the lifestyle that living in an earthbag house provides. Um, and yeah, we're gonna show you the, the building upstairs. I'm gonna take you right back to the beginning when we, um, when we came up with the concept to build this cottage upstairs. Um, and I'm gonna talk you through it step by step, but without the whole, yeah, instructions on how to do it necessarily. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So in this episode, we we want to talk a bit more like how we've reused and recycled and upcycled stuff to make the house and like how generally, right? Yeah. We uh, we try to reuse stuff. I uh, I love recycling. I uh, whenever I drive past the bin, my uh, my kids hope that I don't find anything because I just stuff it in the car. <laughs> uh, but it always comes in useful. You hoard all this stuff, well, and then sometimes it takes uh, one to two years. Yeah. Uh, for example, our uh, hexagonal uh, window upstairs mm. uh, was on the land for two years and I nearly threw it out. I need to find some old videos of when we built this house because I think that piece of glass was leaning against the house here for like two years and it's in a bunch of the old videos. And now, yeah, we've used it for the window in the reciprocal roof upstairs. Yeah, I nearly yeah. threw it out, to be honest. And I think your shoes are maybe a good example. <laughs> Where did you get your shoes from, Nick? My shoes are from uh, the bins out of a fence uh, community. Actually, uh, actually, uh, on that topic, where we found uh, our hot tub. Oh yeah, that's also a really good. I'm going to do a whole episode on this, like reusing, upcycling stuff. Um, but maybe it co it covers almost everything here. But yeah, the the pool we call it the pool, but the hot tub there, it was broken. And in the bin, and that's like a huge lump of plastic to just put in the bin. But anyway, it's been a perfect pool for us. We just use it without the heat. <laughs> yeah. So we had the opportunity to um, give some batteries a second chance at life that have been um, used as part of an emergency power system in a building in Northern Europe and they are really perfectly maintained. They've really like never been used, except that they're there in case of like um, power cuts to the grid um, because the building still needs to maintain power. So it's a huge, huge setup. And um, the guys that are um, responsible for getting rid of the old materials, um, yeah, they, they were happy for us to take these batteries for free um, because otherwise they have to pay for them to be disposed of. Um, so we've managed to get a whole set of lead acid batteries to um, to replace our batteries that we have in the house currently. Um, and I'm going to hand this over to Nick now because I have no idea what I'm talking about with the batteries. I just reap all the benefits of not having to worry about an electricity bill and <laughs> um, having power all year round. So yeah, let's talk to Nick a little bit about the, the battery system.
We also went on an adventure this week out into the wilderness to pick up some batteries, um, some new uh, lead acid batteries for our uh, off-grid solar system. It's kind of a, um, yeah, kind of in keeping with our um, theology on the off-grid thing. Uh, we try to recycle, upcycle and reuse stuff that's kind of like, you know, already in creation as much as possible. Tell us about our solar setup, please. Yes, our solar setup consists of uh, two times 300 watts uh, panels mm -hmm. and uh, one time 400 watts. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, we just use uh, two times 300 watts because uh, we've got some for days. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you now the batteries. In the bike room? In the bike room, which never was a bike room. Why? because I wasn't allowed to keep my bike here. <laughs> so, so this is our full height bike room. Yes, these okay. are our batteries. These are like uh, six two volt blocks all connected in series, which makes uh, 12 volts. And uh, they are like uh, recycled from an undisclosed uh, location oh, I told them why in from. Germany. Mm -hmm. And what are they connected to? Uh, this is our like inverter, 4000 watt peak, mm -hmm. uh, which powers our house downstairs and upstairs. Mm -hmm. And then we've got that? two solar charges, which I'm very happy with. Uh, one for oh. the one for the two 300 watt panels and one for the 400 watt panel. Okay, and that's enough for us to power the whole house. Fridge, washing machine, lights. Yeah, but in winter, we have to be honest, we need to uh, turn off the fridge. fridge at times. Yeah. We've got a north facing uh, property. So uh, in winter, we talk about uh, how much six hours of sunlight. Yeah. Not more. Maybe, so, maybe, maybe let this be the summer version and we'll do a winter one. Yes. <laughs> Delay to date. <laughs> I said I was gonna take you back to the beginning. So let's take a walk down memory lane. And here you can see our very first initial sketch, a rudimentary sketch of the first house, uh, first sketch of the house we made. So we knew we wanted to make an earth bag house. We knew we wanted to make a round house. We knew more or less the space that we had to work with upstairs. And it was at this point that we considered things like which direction the sunset and sunrise is going to be coming from. So we've got um, a north facing hill. So this is a partially burned house. It means it's like half built into the earth around the back, it's kind of halfway up to roof height is buried in within the earth. This will make a little bit more sense later. Um, and it was at this point that we considered that we'd have like westerly evening sunset um, light coming in the window. That's why we put the window on this side. And that the door being on the kind of east, northeasterly side would give us more uh, morning sun in the in the door, which will shine into the kitchen. Maybe you want to open the door in the morning and have that nice sunny um, morning sun sunrise. And also on your terrace here, which we thought would be a really nice space to sit and drink your coffee uh, in the morning. So once we figured that out, that was just an idea and that was without any scale. Then we began to look at like a bird's eye view um, from above. And then we refined that a little bit with a scale drawing. So this is more or less what we actually ended up building in the end um, with a few adaptions along the way. Um, but it was at this stage that we began to refine the ideas so, uh, with things like, you know, we placed the kitchen on the inside of this wall and the bathroom on the other side of it so that the plumbing the water in and the water out is all together here and can just have like one conduit going under the wall. 
and that our um, gas water heater can be on the outside and can, can serve both the kitchen and the bathroom. Um, and here we've placed the wood burner. So this kind of awkward space that was created by this wall here, we've actually made this back wall extended all the way here with just a small, um, much straighter wall here. And this corner, this awkward corner that was created here, is where we've built our wood burner so that it heats this whole main part of the house, the, the cottage, but that it also allows the hot air from the wood burner to travel through the wall through these little vents that Nick's built into the bathroom, which of course needs to be kept warm and dry. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we left it. Um, and we, we remained like open-minded with it from here. So we let it grow naturally through the project. But this is what we marked out on the ground to dig the foundations. So once we got the scale drawing done and all the dimensions prepared, we marked those out on the ground um, with a spray paint can for the digger guy to uh, excavate the trenches. And we realized at this point that actually the ground there was half like pure clay, like we had with the main house. But actually a lot of it was this really sandy, silty stuff, which is not good for bag filling. If you've seen our previous videos, you know there's a very specific science to earth bag filling and you need a good amount of clay um, to go along with the sandy stuff. But this is actually perfect for the foundations, for the footings. And as you can see here, um, once we got the footings all dug out, um, the footings are almost entirely silty, really well draining, really stable, non-expansive, um, silty stuff. And the good amount of clay we had him separate uh, for backfilling. Um, here you can see the perforated drain pipe that we added to the footings uh, with all the big rocks that we found during the digging, during the excavating. And on top of this, we filled finer gravels. So first, like, coarse gravel, big gravel, and then very, very fine gravel. And using this technique, which is called a rubble trench, um, this is a really nice simplified way to form your footings, your drainage, and your foundations. So, you, so you're providing there like um, your drainage and also the nice stable uh, platform on which to build your um, walls. Um, so once we got the gravel up to ground level, um, we we leveled it here you can see me filling the gravel bags once you've got the gravel to ground level you begin to fill the gravel bags um uh, which will form your stem wall you do two courses of those before you begin your earth bag wall and here you can see nick arriving with the barbed wire turns out i'd uh, put the barbed wire in the back of my new car now what did you do i fixed it you put barbed wire in the in the in the in the in the, in the boot yeah. and it rolled over the seat mate no and, no um, not securely because it uh rolled over my new cream leather seats and nick wasn't very happy about it but anyway we live and learn um here you can see the first two courses of gravel bags these are double bagged so you put one bag inside of the other and then fill those with gravel and they still need to be tampered and you still need the barbed wire in between. And this is what I talked about a second ago. This is your stem wall. So this is what takes your earth bag walls up and above any possibility of getting wet when it rains, um, which is, yeah, what you need with earth bag walls. <laughs> and that's about it for this week. So stay tuned next week. I'm going to talk you through the next part of the build upstairs um this cottage here um and not take you all the way through to where we are today um because actually we're in the final process of uh, really the putting the finishing touches on the house now um but i want to share with you the whole process um so yeah i'm gonna go through that a little bit at a time Next week, I'm going to show you how we built the walls and a few things that we did differently this time from the main house, which were just, yeah, really great innovations. Some things we learned in the process of building the main house um, downstairs um, that we, yeah, improvised a few new techniques uh, up here. And I can't wait to share those with you guys. So thank you for staying tuned and for being here and checking out what we're doing here. We're so happy to share this journey with you. And as always, if you have any questions or if we can help you with your earth bag uh, hopes and dreams, <laughs> please let us know. 
I hope you all have a great couple of weeks and thank you so much.